That silly truck. Who knew it would run so good? Well, my daddy told me just hand tights good enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Eric. Well, I'll tell you, Eric. I didn't get that on there tight. Make sure they are seated into their lifter sockets. Well, we already know we can't do that because we don't even have the original lifters and all that, so that's void. Uh, Got to eat my mallow cup here. Uh, well, we're back out here today at this old Chevrolet. Boys, we got another one. A 1977 Chevrolet C10 Cheyenne. Welcome to RC Industry. Thought we'd just take a little quick look at all the lifters. There's the one out of the one that was missing on so bad. You can see that one's really caved in there. But then this one slightly is, and so is this one. And then these have all got big chunks out of them. So what in the world? I hope the cam bearings haven't cut loose in that thing. That's going to be unfortunate. Anyway, let me know what you think. Oh, hey, Drake here. Uh, got to eat my mallow cup here. Uh, well, we're back out here today at this old Chevrolet. You know... The old uh, blue brown, as it as it was, as it were. Yeah, these things are pretty good. If you ain't never had one of these. Mm. Anyway, what I want to show you is in this book, uh, you know, Mr. Chilton here for this '70 and '87 through '87 Chevy pickup. Uh, I can't remember how to adjust the valves, to be honest with you. It's been a long time since I did a Chevrolet. So, you know, Ford, you know, you gotta kinda get them up snug and then go around through one through three, and or, you know, through the firing order by turning the thing, and ever so often some of the intake is adjustable. And, and the slant sixes, you know how that is. Of course, those, are, those don't have hydraulic lifters, so you've gotta use a feeler gauge. But on this, uh, this, here's what the book says. Let me just read what the book says. Okay, so it's in here somewhere. I just read it. Oh, uh, here we go. Installing the push rods in the exact location which they were removed. Make sure they are seated into their lifter sockets. Well, we already know we can't do that because we don't even have the original lifters and all that, so that's void. Okay, so swing the rocker arms over on the correct position. We did that. Tighten the rocker arm until all the push rod play is taken up. Well, uh, we're going to do that. Then it says reverse and the remainder of the removal process procedure. So it just goes right into, uh, you know, I thought you were supposed to like turn them another half a turn once they were seated against the, you know, I don't know. So then I get on the YouTubes, right? And I've watched three videos. Each one of them is different. The one guy says, you know, rotate around till number one. So you're up on top dead center and you can do number one and number two, or number one intake and exhaust. And then you can do like, number three exhaust and just so on and so forth and then you which sounds like the way you do a, 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 a Ford okay with hydraulic lifters. so so then I watched this other one and he says to do what the book said right here you know get them down to where you're just supposed to snug them up or where they start to feel snug where you can't turn the, the push rod which makes sense because you're seated against the hydraulic lifter so and then he says turn a full turn well, that seems like a lot to me, because you're only that thing only moves uh, th uh, twenty thousandths in there, from what I understand by reading about the lifters. And then finally, I see this other guy that has all in there about the 350 small block Chevy. This is the only way to do it. 
So he's 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 in agreements with the first two, you know, including Mr. Chilton here. You know, turn that, tighten that down till that don't turn no more. You know, which is kind of what I thought. Then he says, do a half a turn. Hmm. So which is it? Is it a full turn? Is it a half a turn? I, I don't know. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is get all these snug down to like we talked about. And then I'm going to rotate this motor or engine, excuse me. Um, we'll do a one full revolution here, which will be two revolutions of the camshaft if I remember how it works correctly. And then we'll just see how they feel then, all right? Show you more. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this too well with me in the way here, but I'm going to tighten this down. You can see that's really loose, see? But it is on the, it's on the uh, lifter down there. So we're going to tighten this down. And I'm turning that, see, with my fingers. I'm just going to turn that. Until that's tight, or until it gets to where it doesn't want to turn. That's about, about right. I mean, I can turn it if I force it. Okay? And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do that all the way down through there. All right, show you more. Well, Eric stopped by. He's down underneath draining the oil out and trying to get the oil filter off. And um, I've got all these snubbed up, every one of them through here. Now what I'm going to do, and I got the fuel pump back in so I can release the fuel rod against the camshaft. So, yeah, so we got all that going on. So let's, um, let's rotate this thing. The plugs are out of it, by the way. But I want to verify first, you know, I'm kind of like Reagan. He was the man I voted for the first time I ever voted, so... Let's, uh, let's verify that we are up on top dead center. And then we're gonna rotate this around and watch these and make sure they're going up and down. So that's the plan. Show you more. Well, while he's down there still fighting that oil filter, which he finally got broke loose, let's write the date on this. Oh, I don't even know what the date is. 05, 27. Yes, this is Memorial Day. 24. How's it? And don't ever put one on that tight. We like to never got that thing loose. Let me fill this filter out. You can get it on there and then you can pull the plug. Where's the handle at on this thing? That's crazy. Oh, it's on the side. Okay. That's still crazy. Oops. Well, that's plenty. Plenty, plenty. Now it'll be real slick on the side. Well, at least you won't be able to tighten it down real tight like the last goober. <laughs> or Floyd or whoever it was that did it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Eric. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Eric. I can get that on there tight. I've got a I've got a breaker bar over here on a five foot cheater. Let's tighten her down. I might just buy that breaker bar. Did that get that that old gasket come off down there? I don't want. To, I mean, did the gasket come off? Well, shit, I can't. Hang on. We don't want to screw this one up on there if that well, old thing's stuck. No, it's just metal up there. Okay. Well, here. Don't feel any gasket. It's got oil, oil in it. Here, here's a rag. I don't know if you can get it, get it, but... Ooh, stinky. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's got all the vitamins and minerals in it. <laughs> Russell says that's what to use at VR1 high, high, high performance. 20W50. So that's what we're using. Who said that? Russell. Oh, yeah. 
And, you know, he's been running them stock cars around the track for half his life, probably, so I think maybe he might know what he's talking about. That sounds like it's plenty tight. Yeah. Here's the wrench for the oil plug. I don't know, is it 9 sixteenths? Yeah, it is. It fits. I'm just trying to... Anna, I got that tight too, huh? Here, let's move this. You want to move that pan out of the way? Yeah, it'll fall off in there. Yeah. There we go. Ain't no reason to ever tighten that down that tight. No. Well, my daddy told me just hand tight's good enough. Yeah. Well, you might want to be a little more. Well, nervous. for that, but not for the filter. The filter is, oh yeah, you, that's crazy. I mean, this thing here, yeah, I understand people doing that because they don't want it falling off. But if you do it too much, yeah, it strips out. Remember the LTD? Well, and yeah, it, yeah, and also uh, Walmart did that to one of my cars. Yeah, well, Walmart's Where pretty fancy get, about that. Could, oh. Yeah, you gotta get it in the pan. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Okay. All right, let's get that changed out of there and we'll put some oil on it. Show you more. Okay, well, I'm gonna. I stuck me a funnel back here where the distributor goes. I'm just gonna dump that in right there. And this is pre measured out, so Valvoline says it's right, so I guess it's right. And it's got to be good stuff. I mean, it's got an American flag on it, you know. I don't know what country it's made in, but if she don't work, we'll always have thought it would have. I don't guess it's running down on the ground, is it? Oh. Uh, no. Okay, well, it must be good then. Okay, so we got the fuel pump in, like I said, and then we went ahead and stabbed, because we know we're on top dead center. I verified it with a piece of wire, number one, and cylinders at the top. We got our thing back here, cap, uh, or the rotor positioned to where the number one was when we took it out. So um, we had to move the oil pump just a skosh to get that to line up. Um, so we're going to make one full revolution here, and we're just going to kind of verify these valves down through here are, uh, you know, Moving up and down, I guess, so here we go. See what we look like over here. Yeah, that one's real loose. So we'll get that one too. Okay, well, what we're going to do here is we're going to spin this engine over. I'm going to hold this on, on here so because the fuel is able to come out. And we're going to get some oil pressure built up in those lifters. So Eric's in there, he's going to run the key. All right. Bump, just turn it over slightly and see what happens. Nothing. Oh, well, I got to hook up the battery. Hold on. How about five sixteenths? Let me get the can here for the gasoline. 
Okay, just bump it over and see what happens. Well, I didn't see anything going wrong. Try it again. No oil pressure. Okay, spin it. Just keep spinning it until you get some oil pressure. Well, we got, I forgot about the transmission. We got transmission fluid everywhere now, so. And we got all this gas. Well, I feel like that Andy Griffith episode where Gomer going off to the, to the Marines and Andy's there at the camp in case they kick him out. And he's sitting there with a bucket over his head. And he's thinking. He's the thinking cause he did something, and Andy goes, Gomer, that was stupid. <laughs> and uh, Gomer says, yeah, I know, Andy. <laughs> That's why I got this bucket on my head. Helps me think. All right. well, you want to put that bucket on your head and have a think? I need to do something. This is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, show you more. Well, I think that's all we got time for today. So, uh, we uh, verified that I didn't have the radiator hooked up, so we got transmission fluid everywhere. We got that cleaned up. And uh, I got to go uh, help pick up flags for the Optimus Club. So, uh, anyway, hope you had a good Memorial Day, and I'll get back out here tomorrow and we'll work on it again. Show you more. All right, guys and gals. So here's the plan. Uh, in the last, uh, the last exciting episode, uh, day before yesterday, I didn't think about putting a bypass tube on this, so we pumped a bunch of transmission fluid out, and it was just a mess. So uh, and the the uh, fuel was pumping out so much fuel that we couldn't we couldn't spin it long enough to get the oil pressure up. So and I couldn't find my little tool to put down in there and spin it with a, a drill. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm pretty sure we soaked these lifters when we put them in. So they've got some oil in them. And I ran them down snug like you're supposed to, you know, and then, but I'm not gonna adjust them yet because I wanna make sure we got oil pressure and that they are fully, you know, full. And then we'll go through and we'll adjust these until, you know, they just are loose. We'll go around the thing like you're supposed to, you know, the first, one, three, and whatever it is, and we'll follow that little procedure. So, uh, but I want to get it pumped up, so I went ahead and just put the carburetor and put the distributor back on it and everything, so it may start, but I want to whirl it long enough that my oil pressure gauge comes up, and then we'll stop and we'll concentrate on uh, uh, barring this thing over until we get our uh, valves adjusted. So. And these are used lifters, so I'm not going to do a full, uh, I'm not going to do like a half a turn on them. I'm going to do probably like three quarters of a turn once we get them seated where they're supposed to be, where this is just barely will turn. And then we'll do like a three quarters of a turn on each one. And uh, we're going to call that good. I mean, that's all the thing I know to do. So anyway, let's see if it'll, uh, let's see if it'll pump up and get some oil pressure. Show you more. Okay, let's see what happens here. I'm only going to run it until it gets oil pressure. So here we go. That's enough. Okay, so you heard it too, but I heard it. It kind of sputtered, so it's probably getting some fuel into the carburetor finally fill that bowl up and it was getting ready to try to hit. Now we didn't set the timing. I kind of guessed on top dead center and got number one over here on this corner uh, where the, you know, the cap is actually marked number one. So, but it's gonna have to go one way or the other. I don't know which yet. So anyway, let's do the valves. Show you more.
All right, guys and gals, uh, let's see if it'll start. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to run it long, but I'd like to make sure it's gonna, you know, gonna run before we put the rest of it back together. So here we go. I don't know where the timing's at on this thing. Oops. They may, have, they may have put her too far. Let's see. Well, I may have retarded it too far. Let's, let's pull her back a little bit. I don't know. You tell me. Definitely loping a little. Well, I don't know. We may just have to drive the convertible for power to her. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do it last year. And I couldn't figure, figure it out last year on that LTD. And, I don't know what's going on with this. I, I did try it a couple more times. I moved the timing again. Still nothing. It did sound like it popped one time. So I don't know if maybe I got, um, maybe I stabbed the distributor wrong. I know I'm certain that I had my lines marked up on my timing gear and all that stuff. So uh, I'm certain that that is correct. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. One of you need to come up here and tell me what's going on. But I'm gonna, I think it's gonna be the end of the video here. Um, so I don't know where we're at. I have no idea. Uh, I do know I, don't, I haven't got the rest of the front end of this thing put together yet, because I wanted to make sure it ran, because the bearing in the front of the uh, power steering pump is out. And so that's why it didn't have any fluid in it. So I'm gonna have to get one of those, but you know, uh, I got to figure out what's going on with this engine first. Well, hey, it's Rick here, and uh, I just wanted you to know that the old girl does run. Okay, so we got her figured out. Russell, down there from Outfits Garage, got a hold of me and wanted to know how the project was going. Uh, you probably saw last week's video where we put the cam in. This week's video coming out was supposed to be getting this running and taking off on Power Tour. Well, Power Tour is in three days. So, uh, we're not going to be taking this, but we do have it running now. Um, so when you see me down there on Power Tour, we won't be in old Blue Brown. Uh, we'll be driving the convertible like we did last year. So I'll, I'll try to hide because, you know, uh, that's really not a muscle car. But, hey, that's what we're going to be driving. So let me just kind of show you or tell you about what was going on. Uh, we got the cam in there. I ran the valve adjustment just like you saw in the video. We did it three times. And I figured after three times, that's insanity, trying to do the same thing and making it, you know, expecting a different result. So uh, what I did uh, was uh, just kind of put it to sides, and I prayed some to God, and I said, you know, if, if it's not meant to be to take it on power tour, then we just won't do that. So uh, Russell, the guy that from Outfits Garage down there that gave me the cam and lifters for this, he got a hold of me today, wanted to know how it was going, and um, I told him what it was doing. I didn't have any compression. And we talked about, you know, did you have the timing lines marked up, you know, everything in this distributor in, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We went through all that. So then he wanted to know what I did for my valve adjustment, and I said I went by the book. It said to turn them, uh, tighten it up till the rocker, or, or till the uh, push rod wouldn't turn but with your fingers then add actually it said it it said three quarters to a turn and a quarter uh on down and uh but i had kind of remembered in the past i was thinking it was like half a turn so what i did was i did three quarters of a turn after talking with uh, curtis down there at uh, uh at uh canary's hot rod garage uh, another gentleman that helps me out uh He's, he's very knowledgeable as well. So anyway, no compression. It would spin over just, just and no, no compression. So 
Russell told me to back them things off uh, a half a turn to five eighths of a turn. So I backed them off a half a turn, still no compression. Backed them off another quarter of a turn and it started right up. Now it still ain't dialed in, you know, because I had the carburetor so out of adjustment, so far out of adjustment on that one side, uh, trying to make up for that pressure that was coming back in there from the exhaust valve not opening on number two. So, uh, so I take, you know, I understand that it's not, you know, it's not tuned in, but it doesn't miss. So let me hit her up. For So I call that a success. Uh, thanks be to friends and uh, fellow YouTubers and you know people that know a lot more than me. I mean, I'm knowledgeable about a lot of things, but there's some things that in my mind I knew I had to have compression, fuel, and uh, what else? Air, you know, I mean, but I knew that we weren't getting any compression because I actually checked it with a compression tester and it was zero. And I know we had 150 on average, well, probably 100, probably 155 on average on all the cylinders before. So anyway, big thanks to Russell and to Curtis Canary uh, down there, Canary's Hot Rod Garage. Uh, Russell is over at uh, Outfits Garage. So big thanks to them. So now it's on to getting this thing ready to take on power tour. It needs to be cleaned up. I I got the oil changed on it, and I, I need to. I want to check the tires, and I think Dave, uh, a good buddy of mine that we uh, we play golf together, I think he's going to go with me on the first day of the tour, and then uh, I know I think Friday, which is the last day of the tour, I think uh, Kent from uh, Tadlock's Tool Shed is going to come with me. So we're going to look forward to seeing all of you out there and uh, all your projects that you've got going on. I follow a bunch of you on the, the old YouTube channel. So anyway, it was, it was a failure this year getting that one ready for Power Tour. Uh, same kind of deal almost. But, you know, it, it dealt with valves last year. You know, we were supposed to take the LTD on Power Tour and right at the last minute uh, that lifter exploded and broke, which was a good thing because there was also wound up being other things wrong with the car. And that's the problem with this. I could probably scramble around and, and get it tuned up and ready to go. But I haven't checked the brakes. I haven't checked the rear end fluid. I haven't done anything to it, you know, except drive it from Monroe City where I bought it to here. So it's been on the road for 30, 30 miles. Uh, I, well, I drove it around town here a couple times actually, but you know, that was when it was limping around on seven cylinders. Now it's firing on all eight. So anyway, just goes to show you, you can't always go by what the Chilton's manual says. You got to have some knowledge up here. And, these guys that are out there working with on these small block Chevys every day and racing them and stuff, they know what they're talking about, I think. So anyway, we're going to get busy and get this going. But in the meantime, we'll see you all down at Bowling Green uh, for the first day of Power Tour. And as always, we're making it just like brand used here, baby. That silly truck. Who knew it would run so good? Run to Lula, run! Hi, baby!